We are back for another great lecture on the Winer Wellness Virtual Summit. And we are doing this all week long. And I'm very excited because for the first time, we have Chancy Terry here. And she's going to talk to us about sound healing. And I'm actually excited to hear about this because I'm going to learn all about it. So Chancy, I'm going to let you just take it. I'm going to step to the background. And I'll be here for Q&A and maybe to interject some questions. So thank you for being here. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Hello, everybody. I am so appreciative of this. Um, first time doing something this way. And so you'll have to forgive me because I'm learning my left and my right. And um, it's been interesting. So I really appreciate you, Tracy, for having me on. I love the fact that y'all are doing this for the, for the world. And I hope to be just a huge part of that in sharing and getting it out there and making sure that just truth is told. So sound healing is you could take it so many different ways. And today we'll probably take it a few because I want to make sure everyone is interested or knows what I'm talking about or can apply it to your situation, your lifestyle, your day-to-day -day stuff. So feel free to ask questions. Pretty sure I can see those. Um, back and forth conversation is good. I, however, y'all want to go about doing things. I will be looking down. I asked if that was okay. I have some notes and I just want to make sure that they're all accurate and that y'all are getting the best out of your time. Because if you're like me, I usually try to listen to podcasts or things like this through my Jeep as I'm driving and I don't really look at the screen. So I'm going to mostly try to educate you through my voice so that you can pick that up if you are not able to watch physically visually i guess you would say so the history it will just it's going to sound if i start sounding monotonous someone raise their hand or however this works tracy stop me tell me it's boring your your people but i wanted to start with what i do so i am a licensed massage therapist i am in the state of florida i have a license in the state of alabama i started out as a massage therapist in 2009 and that is where I spent most of my career, all of it, except for this year. We moved to Florida and it has been amazing. And with my hands-on therapy, I have adapted it over the years. I've picked up things that have been done for me, for my healing and for my journey. And when that benefits me without me thinking about it, it's a shocker. Because if you're anything in your profession, if you sell insurance, you critique insurance adjusters. If you're a real estate agent, you can't help but look at what il other real estate agents do and how they're doing it, and how you could be doing it better. So with massage therapy, it was always like that. I would get something done and then not know if <laughs> whatever that was great. So sound came into my life through my yoga journey that I like to say was just for me. It was for me to do something out of the norm to get away for someone to tell me what to do for a little bit and just be able to be because we are human beings, not human doers. That can go a whole nother route. So in doing yoga, I met some people who were into sound baths and sound healing and sound vibration music, all this chanting and drumming. And I was like, what is all this? This is so cool because I have been in music my entire life. I have zero musical talent that I have found yet. But I, my dad was a musician for 40 years. He played with people like Willie Nelson, Merle Haggard. He played in, in Huntsville, did some records. So I was around music from baby in, in, in utero. My mom danced and sang up until I, the day I was born. But no, just kidding. But I came out just knowing what vibrations were without knowing that, if that makes sense. So my body was super in tune with frequencies and vibrations from the music and from the sound from just my environment without it in my control. So control is going to be a big part of what we talk about today because there's so, there's so much out of our control. So I grew up dancing. I love music and singing the shower, you know, all that fun stuff that most of us do, but I had no idea the benefits that was creating or the negative things that that was doing until recently, until about two to three years, I've been really diving into sound. So they, the people in the yoga, they informed me that I could come to a sound bath. So whatever, sounds good. The last part of yoga, if you've ever had done yoga, you just lay there sometimes and you just breathe and you do, you do nothing, you're, you're being. And so they were like, it's like that, but for 30 minutes. And I was like, okay, I can do that. That's awesome. Cause I don't have to talk about it. I don't have to think about it. 
So you lay down and you're all nice and stuff. And I started with my hands on my chest. You could start with them out. You can start with them on your chest. And so I'm laying there and my hands start moving. And they go down and that's about 15 minutes of it. And then they slowly come back up and they're back on my chest. And I'm like, okay, so everybody, this must have just happened to everybody. This is, this is, I don't know what they're doing. They're playing with my arms during the thing or whatever. Because I, again, am very open-minded, which makes a huge, huge impact on your health and wellness journey of being open-minded to what something can do for you without making the decision before it's being given the chance. So I roll over and I'm like looking around and the girl beside me is says, what just happened to you? And I'm like, I don't know. And she said, your demeanor has changed. You, you're, you know, I could just, she, you just look different. And I was like, well, I feel different. So I had a little teary eyed, you know, smile on my face. And I spoke to the person afterwards and I told her what happened. And she said, well, these bowls bring frequency, your body back into homeostasis. So uses the frequencies of the bowls based on the frequencies of your body and where there's blockages, where there's just misalignment, where there's an injury, where there's tightness physically, emotionally, spiritually, it, these have been trained to work on your frequencies. Okay. Well, with me knowing essential oils a little bit, I believe frequencies are a thing. We each emit our own frequency. We resonate with things. If you touch something and it shocked you, there's something there. Um, you know, the it's real. So there's that. So I had already been knowing about the essential oil side of things and how you can plants have frequencies and how that reacts with us. And I use those daily. I put them on me. They're everywhere. So she said, the fact that you're a massage therapist, your arms are tight and you work on people and it was relieving that and then bringing it back to balance. Then you can take it even deeper to where, of course, I had to is that I touch people on a daily basis. And that is me constantly being fight, flight, freeze of what's fixing to happen. What am I touching? What am I feeling? What are they doing? Um, vibes. That's right. I love it. Um, I'm all about the vibes. I used to think that was so hooky wooky. And now I call myself a biohacking hippie. <laughs> How about that? So into just hacking my bio and doing it naturally. So I was all about like, oh, okay, the touch and the feel and the, that. Well, I had already had instances of when I would be working on someone, they were vibrating, literally kind of like a TENS unit that you had put on your hands. And I thought my table warmer on a massage table was shocking me. So I would unplug it. I would put my shoes on, rubber, no rubber, all this kind of stuff. Well, I noticed it was happening more with women than it was with men. But in a massage of a, of a female, I take their hair and put it up. So it's really light. You know, I grab and then I clip it. So on men, I don't normally have to do that. It was still happening with men. And that, that would be like if I went up their neck first or something. So did not relate those two to sound or frequencies or anything like that, because I'm still learning all this. I'm like, what is going on with my body? What is happening? And so some more research was done and I was figuring it out and Google um, duck, duck, go is what you should be using, not Google, but um, to look into what that was. And basically because of my training and because of me touching people on a daily basis for 11 plus years, my hands had just became super sensitive to people's frequencies and that opened up the doors. That was so like, wow. Okay. What can I do with this? Because again, Type A, OCD, control freak, got to know what I can do with my hands, like shoot things out of them like a starship warrior, whatever. And I go home and I start practicing on my husband. I'm like, close your eyes and just let me see. And so I would get as close to his body without touching it as possible and start to feel a difference in frequency. And I would say, is this your bad shoulder? Is this your bad knee? You know, is because I'm bad. He has so many broken bones and so many torn ligaments. I'm like, I don't know which one's which. So that was good for me because he was like, yeah. And you weren't touching me. <laughs> so we can get into that whole aspect. Maybe y'all can have me back again for Reiki and energy. But that was where I was like, these are frequencies. That is what it is. So because he's stagnant or because there's injury or because there's something wrong, it's cold, it's hot, it's vibrating different. And it's like, pay me attention. 
So I continue to use that in my massage, whereas I would kind of just feel the body first and then work on that a little bit more. And even after 11 years of my people coming back to me, they were like, that was different. I don't know what it was about that massage. It was so good. You know, I feel so much better. I was like, oh, this is awesome. This is free like education. And I'm doing these things to my clients and I don't even know what I'm doing. Well, fast forward, we have to get continuing education for sound for um, therapies and the massage therapy license. So Tibetan sound bowl massage popped up on the world massage therapy convention, which is a bunch of hippies together in a big place. It's awesome. So you, we went there and I'm just sh short cutting this because y'all don't need to know, I'm sure all of my information, but the Tibetan sound bowl massage was there. And that is what I want to teach you about today is what I do and how it can be done to you. You can do it to yourself. It can be found in your area. You can listen to it on um, YouTube. These are free tools for sound healing. And then we'll tell you what sound healing does. If that sounds good, I like to tell what we're doing and then what it does. But if y'all want it backwards, you can let me know. Um, sound massage therapy is using the power of sound to penetrate ligaments, bones, tendons, organs, cellular tissue. The healing power of sound is one of the oldest and most natural forms of healing known to man. For centuries in all of traditions, harmonious sound, i.e. music, has been used as a way of soothing the mind and emotions. Eastern cultures, it has long been realized that the beneficial effect goes deeper than just the sense of emotional well-being. Sounds have a healing effect on the body at a cellular level. That's where I was hooked. I was like, well, I got a bunch of cells and they all need to be healthy. So what can we do with this? And for you to have an example of visually is water. So water, water, water. It is liquid and movement and motion. So are we. So we have blood, we have water, we have cells moving through that blood and water. And if something comes at us, so if I scream at you, you will not be happy. Your cells will react. Your mind will react. If I play a beautiful music for you, your eyes light up and you smile. You don't even know you're doing it. So the sounds are affecting your emotions right then not to mention your physical. So just by vibrating on this, tapping on it, I know it's actually shaking it too, but the water starts moving. So if we can get these cells moving and cleaning themselves, shaking off all the bad, where does that need to go? It needs to go out into excretion. So into sweat, into urine, into feces, into breath, all those things. So if we can clean ourselves, that is like the top thing that keeps us healthy, happy, and whole. So here's some more ex examples. In India, the ancient science of the effect of musical vibrations on the human organism is called Nada Yoga. The ancient Egyptians and Greeks also realized the remarkable healing power of sound and composed and performed music with the purpose of healing. 40,000 years ago, the Aborigines used didgeridoos to heal broken bones, ligament tears, and organ issues. So that stuff that was going on 40,000 years ago, we still use some of that today with like ultrasound when you have a kidney stone and you go to the doctor and they break it up ultrasonically. That's been around 40,000 more than 40,000 years ago. So the and didgeridoos are sold at your local market that everybody just thinks the word is cool when you say it. But that's my next tool. So I'm getting a didgeridoo. Excited about that. And the fact that that's an instrument that you could have in your house or you could have out on your back porch. And when you get stressed out, you just go play the didgeridoo. And I'll tell you more about how the fact of you just playing the didgeridoo with your vocal cord and your vagus nerve being there, you're getting that vagal tone and you're balancing out mind and body all together by just making some sound through a tube of wood. Um, to enable and understand how sound healing works, it is useful to understand that everything is creating energy vibrating at different rates, dense, apparently inanimate objects like rocks look like solid matter, but are in fact forms vibrating at very low frequency. At the end of the spectrum, light vibrates at a very high frequency. Everything in the, use is vi in the universe is vibrating, including us. So some of you, since I'm talking to a good deal of people who are been there, done that, 
Some of you may even feel the vibrations. If you're laying down and you just feel like you're shaking or the quiver on the inside, those are emotions that are trying to get out or those are things that are needing to like release or go somewhere. Um, more on that, you can just, if you ever feel like that, scream it out, yell it out. Even if it's a happy, ah, get that emotion out, get that vibration out and see how better you feel. You may feel silly. You may feel meh, but at least it's a different emotion than scared, fearful, angry. Sound healing is the therapeutic application of sound frequencies to the physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual bodies of a person with the intent of bringing them into a state of harmony and health. So we all know when we're in balance with mind, body, spirit, things work a whole lot better. So if we could have a tool that did that without us trying, how awesome would that be? The more harmonious and pleasing the sound is, the more beneficial it is for the healing purposes. Different areas of the body and mind respond to the sounds, beginning to vibrate at the same frequency, creating harmony and healing. This is where we get into the control part of there are things in our environment that we absolutely cannot control. But there are some things that we can, and that is what we listen to outside of the environment that we cannot control. Just because you love rock and roll doesn't mean that that emotion overrides the physical condition of it. So it's okay to listen to rock and roll. I'm not telling you not to jam out to some Leonard Skinner or whatever, but you need to know that that's affecting your body on a cellular level and that you need to do some repair if you're going to be there. So counteract it with some classical music, with some Mozart, <laughs> with some sound bowls, which is what we're the concept of this thing is that for you to have tools to balance your body back out. Studies have shown the joy of loving the song does not override the frequent, does not balance the body out like the actual song does. So you should think about this. This is some like some education. If you are pregnant or if you are in a bad state, emotionally, physically, mentally, if you have young children who aren't able to make decisions for themselves, watch what you're exposing them to watch what you're exposing yourself to during those very important times. Because again, I'm sure my mom did not care that my dad was banging it out in the, in the bar musically with me in her stomach. As we listen to as far as music goes, so healthy and healing. Thank you, Michelle. Um, that it probably caused some trauma. So thank goodness my dad was a good singer and he played the piano, but that doesn't mean that I didn't get beat up. And, um, now that I'm educated on sound, I see this a lot and I know that people aren't doing it on purpose, but I told you, so now, you know, but going to the bars, you know, listening to extreme loud music for a prolonged amount of time can needs to be repaired in some way. So there needs to be some balancing frequency coming back. So, and again, like if I screamed at you, that's a, that's something you can't control. So if you live, if you work in an environment where it's very chaotic, it's loud, there's a factory, there's noises, there's banging, there's clanging. You get used to that. You think it's normal, but your body is reacting to that over and over and over again. So even putting headphones in at lunch or listening to some things like I'm talking about, having a chime, having a didgeridoo at home, just something that you can go back to that brings you back to balance. Cause we, you know, we're awesome. Our bodies are fearfully and wonderfully made. They repair um, all the time. But again, the world we're living in, they need help. And the more help that we can give them outside of what they already do for us can only better the thing. Um, the answer lies in an interesting experiment with water. Okay, before freezing water droplets, he exposed them to different sounds or to music. Water subjected to heavy metal music produced weak looking crystals or irregular shape and structure. Whereas droplets subjected to classical music, especially Mozart, produce water crystals of beauty and wonderfully complex structure. The human body has 70% more, 70% or more water. So it seems to be affected by sound. So there's, you know, if you want to go the whole science route of it's proven, you know, you can do the whole water freezing experiment and it's crazy. So just be kind to yourself. That means words out of your mouth, things that you're exposing yourself to that are in your control and just remember that things outside of your control, you just let them go because that's one less thing that we need to fight, fly, or freeze about. There are books that 
talk about the waltz. It always strengthens our muscles, like the waltz dance. That tune is a strengthening tune. Um, I talked about the rock and roll. Sound healers use different modalities to heal their patients, including Tibetan bowls, musical instruments, and the human voice. The Tibetan bowls are placed on the fully clad body and are gently tapped. Their beautiful tones and overtones create a resonance in the organs and tissues down to the marrow of the bones. Even sluggish cells come into motion, participate in the dance of life. So how many times have you heard the dance of life? You know, um, I wish I would have danced or life is a dance that comes from somewhere. And I truly believe it's internally and physically. So if we can get the inside of our body to dance, imagine how happy it would be. Even And even for us people who don't like to dance, we don't have to physically do it. We can just let the inside of our bodies dance. And I think if I'm a betting woman and I live in Florida, the lottery's here, <laughs> that um, you would eventually move the body too. Every part of the physical, mental, and spiritual body has its own resonant frequency. If there is a weakness anywhere, the harmonious sounds of the Tibetan bowls stimulate the energy fields, strengthening them as blockages are dissolving. I love wind chimes. I wonder why some people love them and some people hate them. I am I getting too far ahead and asking a question as to why do it others can't stand some sounds that are good and why others might myself love it almost like I need to hear it sometimes. Yes. Okay. So that's a good question, Michelle. And that's what this is about. I talked to Tracy. We're 22 minutes in and I just want y'all to come back and forth because I want y'all to learn from this what you're wanting. If you're watching this, then this is, you know, for you. And we can always take off into another talk on one on one and, and educate you on what you need. So my studies show that also like oils. Sometimes if you don't like the smell of an oil, that means it is right there with that frequency that you are needing. So you are fighting it tooth and nail because you are so that you're so opposite of it is that it is a would change you if you would use it. But sometimes like a magnet, you know, we just we don't want it. So we always say start applying that oil to the feet and then slowly you'll be able to use it. So that's on the essential oil side. So I believe it's that way with sound. I believe that our that when that sound comes at us, it is so opposite and so opposing to the frequency that we're carrying that our body is like, whoa. And that could be internally, that could be where, you know, it's a very nice spiritual cleansing sound and maybe we got a lot going on deep. We got some emotional, spiritual stuff going on and it is trying, but the body is sometimes we just are like, that would change me way too much right now. I do not want that. Um, I hope that answered your question and we could go deeper into that. But um, there have been people where I've played bowls for them and they're like, oh, for a second, it was kind of hmm, spooky wooky and sound like a scary movie. But then I felt better. So it's all about being open minded and receiving that sound and expect and just under hoping that you trust the the presenter of the sound. So that is another thing, you know, like when you're YouTubing and stuff like that, just read the reviews and see how people felt when they listen to it. Cause some people like to put sound out there with no education um, or no know how, and they're not trying to do it on purpose. They're just, you know, they think it sounds pretty and they do it. Um, so it's not much harm that it can do, but definitely read their views and see if they're people that have been doing this for a while. I mean, me. so, but that's it. I think that that's why people don't like it. And even the wind time thing, even though they sound pretty, it, it, would you don't want to judge that person or like because that person doesn't like wind times means that they've got a lot spiritually going on but it could help you understand the dynamic there and i just feel that that that's my take on it per research um, per little things here and there again sound is not studied enough i don't think um so during our waking state the normal frequency of our brain wave is that of beta and beta is going to be the waking state. So oh, I'm ready to do something. Got to, you know, I'm able to come on and get this thing done. And you want to, it's characterized by the one thing we all want to get away from, stress. But that brainwave state has its place. It's the action mode. And that's the way it should be. If we're not alert when we're awake, bad things can happen. But modern life is full of stresses that won't kill us like the saber-toothed tiger that was chasing you back in the day. So stuff like jobs, relationships, things that don't work when they're supposed to. And our reaction to them is sometimes the same as we were being 
chased by a bear, which is not good, but our body just doesn't know how to break the other two around. Sound massage, sound healing, allows the brain to move into a deeper alpha and then theta brainwave frequencies. These are the frequencies that induce sleep, meditative and peaceful states, clarity of mind and intuition. Sound can create a sacred space in which people can heal themselves from stress disorders, pain, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, depression, and many other ailments. Appropriate sound frequencies speed up the body's own natural healing process, activating our inner ability to heal, which is my passion, by applying frequencies to an injured or diseased area. Clinical research has shown that a return to normal healthy functioning is accelerated. And that's where we're at. Thoughts on esophageal frequencies. I love it. And those can be used. I mean, they're used in sound therapy all the time. They are more, they do what they're supposed to do. So just playing them, being exposed to them um, cannot hurt you. I mean, it can only better your life. So I hope that is, that helps you. But I, I guess that's my thoughts on it. I'm, I'm all about the frequency. So I'm like, take them, come on, bring them on. And then let me see what they do. So I would love your take on that. Because again, I think sometimes with me being, bi I guess, unbiased, biased, I just take all sound for what it is and don't sometimes separate it and say what this does or what this doesn't. And that might not be good for my sound healing explanation, but I, again, am on that path and I want to know everything about everything. But when I take a step back, I'm like, okay, well, let's just group all this together. And if it can, let's look for, for number frequencies and see what they do and then try to find that number. And like the disease has a number and the frequency and then we try to fix that so which is what i do with oils because i get really overwhelmed with that um sometimes i'm like well, what does this one do what does this one do so i kind of just go eh, what does the frequency do is this going to raise my frequency is this going to raise my vibrations good vibes then i'm putting it on hopefully that hopefully i went into that enough um every part of this <laughs> i don't want to uh i hope y'all are still on along for the ride so there's a book, if y'all are readers, I like to give y'all some things to read. The Healing Power of Sound. And then Dr. John F. Diamond's research. He's got a lot of research. So Dr. John F. as in Frank Diamond's research. And then this is the Healing Power of Sound by Mitchell Gaynor. And I will type some of that stuff up. So we're 30 minutes in. Okay. Here's more about the waves because I want to tell you the brain waves and how they're affected with sound. Men, women, and children of all ages, races, and across all cultures share the same range of four distinctly different brain wave activities. Beta, which we talked about, the alpha, theta, and then delta. So delta is that deep unconscious sleep. For a singing bowl practitioner, me, the alpha, beta, alpha, theta border is the greatest importance. Soon after tapping a bowl, can you also give a resource for the disease? Listen to all frequency you just mentioned. Absolutely, Grace. I have that. So we'll do that. Um, thank you for asking. Um, for a singing bowl practitioner, enter the altered state. Soon after tapping a bowl, the therapist as well as the client enter into this altered state together. Pause. Can y'all hear the bird in the background? And if it's bothering you, I apologize for nature. But I like to be outside with the energy when I'm doing things like this. And um, this bird lives in our thing. So that right there shows you how powerful sound is. So if you're only focusing on the sound of the bird, that was out of your control. It's out of my control. It's affecting us. So there's a great example. Their breathing becomes synchronized and slows down. They become in tune with their own bodies, with each other and the rhythm of Mother Earth herself. In this state of trust, the wonderful effect of letting go and letting God happens. Worries, problems, confusion, they all subside. Blockages in the physical body are loosened and the healing powers are stimulated. The subconscious mind rids its divine blueprint of clutter as it absorbs new information and new harmonies. Cardinals. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> They're beautiful. But we also have a whoop wheel but it's not a whoop wheel It's some kind of other bird that sounds like a whoop wheel and at 7.30, they immediately start playing to, playing together. So we talked about, I'm going to talk about them so that y'all understand and y'all, if y'all are taking notes. 
So beta is awake and alert. Brain wave, brain produces beta waves when we are awake and alert. We've all talked about that. It's the saber tooth tiger, but also caffeine and betamine can induce the enhance and in, induce or enhance the state. This is between 15 and 40 cycles per second because that's 15 to 40 hertz. Alpha is the relaxed state. Alpha waves are the most widely brain wave known. They are usually associated with meditation and altered states of consciousness. In fact, alpha waves are only a small part of that. The moment you close your eyes, your brain is starting to produce alpha waves. This is how the equipment is routinely used in a testing sleep lab. So our alpha waves do more, more than they, it's not just about meditation. You can bring them on with vibrations. You, and when meditation is said, a lot of people get, oh, I'm done. I ain't got time. I've done it for a minute. I'm over it. I don't want to do it anymore. That's the thing about sound is sound can do so much more than meditation. So if you, if you incorporate it with meditation and breath work, it can change your life. So, and that's what it did for me. Um, so the sound does it for you is basically where I'm at. So people that are like, nope, I don't want to meditate. I'm turning off right now. You don't have to. It would be great if you did. And sound can entrain your brain to where it can shut down for a little bit to allow you to meditate. But sound can be your open door to all that. It can be that come home, listen to this, or, you know, before you get out of your car and walk into your house, put some five minutes of the, um, Sophageo frequencies on. You can look that up and be like, play this now. <laughs> Didgeridoo, uh, Tibetan sound bowl. Just, it, it can be played over you and it's going to change you. And then you are just sitting there allowing it to happen. Sound massage can effortly, effortlessly put you into the state of alpha. Then we have delta, which is a coma, basically, but you're asleep. In a coma state, delta can slow to one cycle per month. So the brain is still active, but it's one cycle per month. About two thirds of our sleep time is taken up by this state in which the brain rests and restores in balance. The body uses this time to repair itself from the day's activity. Delta waves have also been recorded in psychic healers while engaged in healing work. So they've even picked up the delta waves of someone who's awakened. I mean, they are and they're doing their job, which is what I my goal. So we, the relaxation through sound is where I want y'all to be happy and to know that with the world today, that you have something to turn to that can physically alter our cells, which we've been talking about cellular health and how our cells are very important right now with everything that has been thrown at us and shot at us. And a lot of that's out of our control. So if we start controlling the things that we can control and let go of the others, I can't promise it'll be perfect, but I can dang near bet that you would be amazed at the power that you have and that you did it on your own. And it's like, why wouldn't I do in this sooner? So you may already love sound and you may already incorporate it, but having the tools to very interesting. Thank you, Diana. And having the tools to do more with it for pretty much nothing. Just like if you have a whole whole cabinet of supplements that you don't have to think about. You just go up there. I know I got it. I feel, you know, having this emotion, having this feeling, having this whatever. You just it's a it's a supplement in a in a bowl <laughs> with your supplements, which we've talked about um before I know the gut brain connection has been talked about. But when we are in fight or flight, when we are stressed out, all of the blood flow comes from our organs to our extremities, our brain, our body, because it's like, what do I need to do? So if you're eating in a stressed state, if you're chewing and you're pissed off, or you're chewing and somebody's screaming at you, or you're chewing and eating and you're standing up and you're doing the dishes, all your blood is nowhere near your gut. And then you wonder why you have acid reflux. You wonder why you have digestive issues. You wonder why that steak was so amazingly delicious, but you feel like junk. Sometimes it's our frequency. It's our body's way of saying, I don't even know what you just did because I was trying to do 18 things at one time. And we are not meant to multitask. Our brains do not multitask. They never do one thing at the same time. They are flapping back and forth between the two. So you want to bring balance to that, even though you think you're doing, oh, I'm doing two things at one time. I'm drinking my water and writing down and all this kind of stuff. You're not. Your brain is going crazy. And that's what it's meant to do. It's fine. We do that. I'm not telling you to stop multitasking because most of us, it's our job. And you have to have some kind of repair or it's going to, it's going to burn out. So if you have these tools, 
to come back to, to use for yourself, fine. Now, maybe you don't care to play the bowls. Maybe you don't want to buy a didgeridoo, but that can be something that you put on your non-negotiable. Now, I'm going to find somebody that will do this for me. I'm going to find somebody who will explain this to me. I'm going to find someone who will cater this to what I need. Then that takes out some of the guesswork of what do I need to do? Why am I doing this? What's going on? So I'm going to tell you about two of the chakras, if you're into chakras. And if you're not, then that's just the energy centers in the body that hold certain organs and body systems. So we start up here and we go down here. And I'm not going to teach you about chakras, but you can look into that. But you can just call it the systems of the body and how they are affected by sound. And the two main ones that I wanted to explain to you that if you don't do anything else but find sound for these is the heart chakra, which is the heart, the thymus, lower lungs, circulatory and immune system, all things that we need to be producing and 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 boosting. Yes, chakras. See, I'm talking about people. I love it. And then sacral, which is reproductive, hello, endometrial lining and uterus and ovaries and pheromones and sexual organs and sexual reproduction and fertility. Kidneys, filtering things out, getting rid of the bad physically and mentally and emotionally. Bowels excretion of all things immune system again so the heart and the sacral are all are the two main chakras that we could be focusing on heart and then shake sacral which is two inches below the belly button heart is of course your heart and the sacral is two inches below the belly button so a lot of times if you're into meditation or yoga or anything they'll tell you to place one hand on your heart one hand on your stomach because those two go hand in hand oh, you're welcome jennifer thank you i'm glad I, i'm glad this is being spoken and so With that balanced heart and gut, gut and heart, we can do that right there can put us into a let's do this. So one main thing that you can take away, just like you take your magnesium or your vitamin D or your CBD, sound should be a part of your recovery, a part of your restoring balance back to your body after anything that comes at you. So even if it's just at the end of the day, or maybe it's at before a meeting or after a meeting or during a meeting, however you got to do it, scream, <laughs> start laughing. So, and we can talk about that too, because the laugh is so cool. It was evolved to let people know that they're safe. So back in the day and you would come into a situation and you didn't know if someone was being serious or not because they were still learning tones and, and how to communicate. So ha, 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 that would let someone know that, Oh, okay, we're good. We're chill. This person's not going to cut my head off. And then it evolved into sadistic and you can, you know, you can get somebody really going with a laugh. You can, it's contagious. Laughing is contagious, but how does our body know how to do that? How does it, how does it release that frequency and know that we need that at that time? My concept is that it knows we need a vibration. It knows we need a, uh -huh. so either it continues that happiness or sometimes people nervously laugh. That's a frequency that needs to come out. Something is going on. You are way too, you know, something is like, Hey, the body's like, Oh my gosh, you're in super stressed out state. Let's see if we can shoot this frequency at her and make her start laughing. And then some people are like, why did I just laugh? Well, it's the body's way of trying to heal you. It will, it's always trying to heal you. It's never trying to hurt you. And when it starts hurting you, you need to be looking at the reason it's hurting. So what, what am I not listening to? What am I not answering? What am I not feeding into? And then that right there, again, if you're like me and you want answers, you can cut everything off the board. Oh, well, maybe I haven't been doing this or maybe I need to be doing this for this area. What am I not doing? The body is usually doing everything it, it wants and needs to do to keep you functioning. So it's hit with all kinds of environmental toxins and things like that that knock it off course and then have to get back on. But the thing is, is that we are able to do that. So with the sacral and the heart chakra being in balance every day, every night, every morning, I, your day is in the middle. So even if you have that in mind and you know that you're always going to have a stressful atmosphere, you think you're never going to get out of it. Your relationship is terrible. Your kids are yelling. Blah, blah, blah. You know that you have control of those two things, waking and going to sleep. And if you don't, please talk to me because we can figure out a space and time for you to do that. But a one minute, two minute, that's and then in the middle, it's going to be OK. You know, life isn't great and I'm not trying to sugarcoat everything. But knowing that we have those two things to look forward to. 
makes the middle better. And then knowing that in between, if something is like, oh my gosh, that's going to register with you when you go home and you try to do your nightly sound, or it's going to register with you that, look, I got to get in the bathroom and I got to listen to some, like something. I got to hear some purple rain or <laughs> I got to get out of this mode. And you can even, oh my gosh, there's so much. You can even go into the humming aspect of it, of that that is your natural ability to stop. Like, mm, 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 just hang on just a second, you know, like that. Or when you're eating, mm, this is so good. Mm, 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 that's delicious. Just doing that, it people would not even think you were doing anything. They're just like, oh yeah, she's enjoying that food. But you're helping that body digest. You're giving that body a frequency that it needs. You're giving that tone to the body to say, all right, I got this. One more, just one more hour. The next hour, <laughs> just laugh a little. So our sound is so important. And we've been told to stop. We've been, you know, conditioned to, well, I, I ain't got time to say that right now. I'm just going to text it. So our voice is taken from us. Our sound is taken from us. So we have to get it back in our lives. And I truly believe Nikola Tesla said it the best. Two things. If you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. The day science begins to study non-physical phenomena, it will make more progress in one decade than in all previous centuries of its existence. So I've gave up on science and all these other people figuring it out for me. I haven't gave up on, on science. I've gave up on scientists and like figuring it out a lot of them. We've got some powerful ones, the ones that we trust and all that, but the majority of them, I just don't know what to do. So I can be my own scientist. I can begin to study non-physical phenomena and see where it takes me. So the education side of it, is all that we have. I'm getting to the end and Stacy hasn't came on. So I don't want to like, I don't know if I'm to the end, but I want to play my bowl. So Stacy, that's it. So when you know that I need to like be wrapping it up, I'm going to play the bowls for y'all at the very end so that you have something to go with. Um, I love Nikola Tesla on frequencies. So if they've been studying this stuff forever and they've been shutting it out forever, just like anything else, don't you know that you should probably try to research it and go further into it? and figure out what's going on. Like why they don't want me to know about this. Okay, so we have a little bit more time and I want to tell you about musical entrainment because I didn't want to leave that out. But anyways, so musical entrainment means that when I play these bowls, it is going to entrain your brain and your body and your cells to that frequency. It just does it because it's being scientifically done. <laughs> I know that doesn't sound very smart, but that is what is happening. So same concept as if you're living to heavy metal, ah, screaming, kids are screaming. You're being entrained to that. So you need to find that balance. You need to come back to it. And if it, in music, it is possible to have rhythmic entrainment, melodic, melodic, melodic entrainment and dynamic entrainment. Music or sounds of singing bowls have the potential to resonate with the listener's feelings and transform them to a higher more positive state and have an influence on the cellular oscillation itself, completely apart from the emotional reaction to the sounds. So if you don't want to believe in the emotional side of it in the spiritual side of it, you can believe in the science side of it that has been studied and way back, not five days ago. So 40,000 years ago, they've been doing this. They even did it in Egypt. There were runes carved out of stone that held certain frequencies when something was played in there and they would lay these bodies on more on the on the stone and play the sound around them and heal them and that i mean that can be found and can be explained if you and that's where i'll go into the singing bowl so the singing bowls are a legacy from the far eastern cultures of japan china thailand and the himalayan regions they are mysterious and beautiful artifacts whose shape and ethereal sounds delight us and act as a gateway to altered states of physical, mental, and spiritual harmony. The origin of the singing bowls is lost in the mist of time. Hardly anything is known about their history. Archaeologists claim that most likely at the beginning, they were simply sturdy storage containers, replacing less durable animal skins. But realizing their potential for sound, they soon were used as musical instruments, a prototype of a bell to be struck on the outside instead of the inside. Local legend attrib attributes another important pass to the singing bowls. They're used as a food energizer. So people would eat out of them and drink out of them, hoping that they held a certain frequency of, so that the food would absorb that frequency and then the food would be ingested and you would carry that frequency. 
which I truly believe in. I play bowls around my water. I play bowls around liquid and then I drink it. So what can it hurt me if, if it does or it doesn't? Whatever their purpose was in the beginning, one thing is for sure. Singing bowls with beautiful tones and overtones have always been difficult to make. They were highly sought after and very precious. A traditional singing bowl contains seven different metals. Some of them contain up to 12 and they each resent, represent one heavenly body. Gold for the sun, silver for the moon, mercury for mercury, copper for Venus, iron for Mars, and zinc to represent Jupiter, and lead, the planet of Saturn. In the past, the forging of bowls was complicated. So the decline of singing bowl production in Tibet coincides with the invasion of the Chinese who tried their best to secularize the, the theoretic society. Where are we at now? Coming in, trying to change our society. Experimenting with this steady, steadily increasing collection of different bowls and mallets, they were able to develop probably more to the point, rediscover a powerful yet gentle healing system. He found that it is possible to elicit a great number of tones from the same singing bowl and that there really is a right sound to alleviate a particular problem and that there are also sounds that act like a tonic and are beneficial for almost all conditions. Unlike a more complicated instrument that has to be mastered before it can be enjoyed, the singing bowl invites you to experiment and to play. So just having a bowl and playing it can benefit you. And then as you learn and as you grow, you'll be so excited about the benefits that it's doing and knowing it's like a kind of like a pacifier or a blanket. You get to hold that and this is my sound and I'm going to play it and I'm going to be happy. Um, I don't know. I feel like I need to address more. So there's more to it than just playing the bowl over people, but that is where I like to start. And that is what I do. I play for people in, in yoga classes. I play at the end of yoga classes. I use them in my massage therapy. A Tibetan sound bowl can vibrate seven hands deep. So even if that, fifth hand doesn't feel the frequency or feel the vibration, it still goes through that. They put me in a Tibetan bowl in class and it was huge. It was probably, you know, big and I was able to stand in it. Told me to close my eyes. So I, whatever, do the thing. She plays it. It's the most beautiful sound you've ever heard. It's amazing. It's vibrating. And I think I'm standing still and I have my hands down and everybody, when I open my eyes, they start laughing and giggling. And I'm like, what was it? And she was like, you didn't feel like you're about to fall out of that bowl. And I said, no. And they show me a video and she has her hand behind my back and I'm doing this in the bowl. And I thought I was staying still. So again, had no idea. Didn't go up there ready to do that. And that happens. So when you are open-minded and you are accepting, your body is so receptive, but we, it's just nature to protect and to guard. And to, I don't know. And but open it up and sound can do that for you without you again, knowing. So I've, I've, I've told you some things. So now you may be expecting them. And that's probably, that's one of the things of education. Sometimes once you know, you can't go back, but I urge you to just listen to my, some of my sound bowl or listen to sound bowl online and see what it does for you. Because sometimes that's the best medicine. That's the best answer is just how you feel and what it does for you. And if you don't like the sound, look into it. See what that sound was and see what frequency it holds. And then you can look up some diseases and what frequency they hold. And then you can be like, oh, yeah, I have gallbladder problems. And that's probably what's going on. So the Tibet and then after. So and it reduces. So it boosts your energy no matter what. Or some of them can. It'll do something to your energy, but it can like make you super ah, excited and like I can take on the world. Do you have to listen with earphones? You do not have to listen with earphones, Courtney. Um, I was pretty much finished with that last sentence. It was just basically saying that after I got in the Tibetan bowl, that that whole day, people that didn't even know I had been in the bowl, they were like, whoa, your energy is out there. You have a space bubble around you. Nobody can get in it. And I was like, yeah, I know. Like It was like it created a barrier around me and I nobody was touching that. Um and then we can go into like, there was a story of a girl that was on my team that was really, really into some stuff, like some Wiccan and some stuff. And um, when the teacher came around, she was hitting a gong. It literally blew the gong back. And so that's the whole spiritual side of it is, I, I mean, you got to be careful who you surround yourself with. And even if you got to surround yourself with them, you need that barrier. So if sound can create that barrier for you physically, 
like in on a realm that people cannot see space bubble type thing. I don't care about the six feet for that. I care about the six feet because of your energy. So I don't need it. I don't want to be sick. I ain't got time. And the earphones thing. If you are listening to binary beats, they need to be listened to in earphones. And binary beats is one frequency in one ear and one frequency in the other. And the brain does not hear either one of the difference. So 200, 200 hertz in one ear to 10 hertz in another, the brain hears 10. And 10 is right there with the beta and the alpha. So it gets like right down to where we need to be. I wanted to give you all those. Y'all can always message me. I hope y'all know that. So, um, yeah, alpha is 8 to 12. So 10 is right there in the middle of alpha. So it starts getting you into that meditative state. So if you're listening to binaural beats, it does. But when you're listening to sound bowl, you do not. And um, that is the awesome thing about it. So when I play today, you'll be able to um, see how it feels and hopefully love it. And so that was where we were about talking about me being in the bowl. And that was that change. That was where, again, my journey just continued. I was like, I have to put people in bowls. <laughs> and I haven't done that yet because the bowls are really expensive. But I did get a awesome Tibetan bowl from my from that place and it was awesome and I play it all the time and it is my bowl it stays at my office and I don't bring it into negative situations I don't I try to just keep its frequency happy healthy and whole and then I have a chakra set that I love to play because that goes through the entire body and aligns it opens it closes it seals it in um, you can do that with the new with the moon cycles if you're into that so there's so many ways you can take sound but where my passion is is that I like to just be but I do a lot. So if I can get something to just allow me to be, it cannot hurt me. Okay. There's no way. Um, there's a video with Christian Northrup. Yes. Grace. Binarial beats with headphones. Thanks for the info. Awesome. Um, Courtney, I hope you got that. That you do. And I mean, it can't hurt if you want to listen with headphones. That's amazing. But you don't have to. And the, I knew I would do that. I knew I would get so excited that I, lost my train of thought but that's okay because it wasn't meant to be said so where you're the sound that you can take with you is that knowing that it's just coming and you can't you don't have to as long as you trust that sound that it's going to do what it's supposed to do and of course having an open mind and having an intention with sound so there's levels but my passion again was saying that if you're a do 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 then you need some time to be and that is what sound did for me. And so it can do that for children. There has been studies that show that just playing it in a classroom without telling the children or telling anything, their test scores were better. Their um, attention span was better. Their fidgetingness was better. There's um, Christian Northrup. So the study by Christian Northrup that was just, or she told about it recently, is that the 420 hertz is doing something to the cells no matter what so it's going to change our cellular makeup so where we're at today we need to change our cellular like we need to completely clean that and make sure that it's in motion and moving like it's supposed to so they're studying these things more and more so if you're ahead of the game and you already have your little sound bowl and you have a didgeridoo and you have a chime someday maybe we'll all be outside playing stuff and making the world a better place so you can take it into that. There's so many quotes about music. Oh my goodness. Five-year-old bordering ADHD. Number one, video games are sometimes a lot to do that. He's five, so he's probably not finding video games. So definitely just don't let him go that route. If he still isn't on the right spectrum and doing things or not right spectrum, don't take that the wrong way. She does seem to calm with worship music in the background. Absolutely. And so that would be the thing is that controlling her background, controlling her daily background. So if she's in school or she's at home, daycare, um, I don't know if she's in like goes to therapy or goes to anything like that, but controlling as much of that as possible with literally just looking up um, Tibetan sound bowl for ADHD. That's what I love about it. Tibetan sound bowl for peace and calming, Tibetan sound bowl for this. And you will find it because people have studied it and people have done it. And then again, me, I mean, I'll be there. I'm absolutely happy to help. Um, there's a lot of things that we can do. There's Zooms like this. There's nap time. Oh, that's good. Okay. Montessori school is really, I mean, they're usually very receptive to things. So um, 
if they have night time still, I'm not good with school because I have kids, but lunchtime or when she's able to have sound, any time she's able to have a mm, very, very alpha sound all the time to sensory overload. Um, I don't want to keep talking, but if you, there's, there's a chakra bowl for that. If I need to, I can get there. I can get you that information. Can I message these people separately? Hopefully so. So Grace, I can get you the, I, get in it, I know. <laughs> I'm like, I love it. <laughs> They're very inquisitive. No, I so love it. any, um, the, uh, any of the questions, they will be here. Okay, and good. Keep posting if you have more questions. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. And you are welcome to come back anytime oh, and answer you. them. So, <clears throat> but very informative. Thank you. Yeah, yeah you're so welcome. Um, thank you. Yeah, it's been awesome. So, where can they find you, Chancy? Okay, hey. I am at chancyterry.com. So it's C H A N C E E T E R R Y.com. And then that links you to everything. So if you go there, it's being done. It's happening. So there's Sweet. Facebook, Instagram. It's all my things. Um, and it's a work in progress. So I'm sure y'all know how websites work, but you get them going and you change them. And then you think they're done, done. And then, nope, yeah. you got to add no, more. We need another page, another drop down, another yes. click. <laughs> I know. And, and then, then you know that you're like, okay, I want to simplify this. So let's just have like one button. But yeah. That's right. So right. That's how they can find me. And um, I love meeting people. So thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for coming today. Thank you for everybody yeah. with all your questions and participation. Yes. Uh, wonderful. And uh, we hope to have you back next time. Continuation. Yes. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you, my friend. Thank you, everybody thank you. who participated. And stay tuned for our next lecture because she is coming up. Have a great day, Chansey. I posted your link. Get in touch with her and we'll talk to you soon. Appreciate it. See you guys. All right, guys, stay tuned for Michelle Kunzelman, who is coming up next, uh, her walk through COVID and uh, what she has learned in her journey and where she is today. All right. Stay